going on, everybody? D Rock here. And uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, templates and the importance of templates because I just made a new template for Reason and I'm really excited about it because uh, it's going to make my workflow a little bit easier. So we'll open up a blank session and I'll show you what's going on. So, yeah, this is my template. This is how every session from now on, as of two minutes ago, will load up. If you don't know how to set a uh, your own your own template uh, to custom load up, uh, if you go to Reason Preferences, Default Song Template, and then you you can choose what what you want. So I've got a templates folder inside my overall Reason Sessions folder um, that it uh, pulls from, and yeah, I have this just so I can work a little bit faster. Um, and I don't have to spend time doing like doing the engineering side when I want to be be creative, because um, if if you're able to separate the audio engineering versus the production side of it um, a little bit, you, I, I feel that you can be a more 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 creative. You can get the ideas from your head to your software faster and easier. Um, and oh, you, you work faster and you get to make more music, which is kind of what we all want to do. Right. Uh, so I'm going to run through this template real quick. Um, we're going to start from kind of, yeah, we'll start with the instruments. So I've got a Kong. Uh, this is my main, my main drum, uh, machine. Um, I have it, I have, um, I have all the audio outs, broken out into their own channels. Uh, that way when I load up a sound, for example, a kick drum, I will send that out to its kick channel. So it goes out there rather than Kong 1. And then same thing with uh, snare. So I always, I always put my snares and my kicks on 1 and 2. Uh, backwards, kick and snare on one and two. Um, specifically for side chaining that I will get into in a minute uh, once I go over the rest of my instruments. Um, grand piano would be next. Uh, I have this for quick melodic ideas. When if I'm like if I end up humming something while I'm at work and I get home and I and I want to make that really really quickly, I can just open up a session, uh, click on this and start playing. It's super nice. Uh, then an instance of Serum, if I want to do some weird sound design, uh, Serum has been my kind of go-to instrument recently. It's super powerful. There's a million resources on it, uh, on the internet and in the manual. So yeah. Um, and then a sidechain bus that brings me back to the Kong and this reed drum up here. So the sidechaining thing, um, I used to do it uh, uh, in a way where it was using the audio out from uh, this redrum and then going into the dynamic input of um, of the uh, side uh, of the uh, mix or of the um, bus. Uh, and then I would use uh, the 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 uh, the onboard compressor with the key input engaged. Um, to do my side chaining. Thing is with that is compression is going to color your sound um, and, and you know, it's going to bring up the real, real quiet stuff and bring down the real loud stuff. And yeah, I, I don't want that as much. So I recently got the uh, Reasonistas uh, side chain reaction, RE. Totally worth it. Absolutely love it. Super awesome uh, uh, side chain thing. It's, it's been something that I've wanted and I've looked for for a while but I've never found it until obviously this, uh, and it's an RE. So it, so it integrates awesome inside of, um, uh, inside of reason. So, uh, what I do now, um, to do my side chaining, what I'll do is I already have stuff in here. I need to modify this template then. So, uh, to give you an idea, um, I break out my kick and my snare into their, uh, into their own channel, separate from hi-hats or cymbals or toms or or what have you. That way, when I want to, I can just copy and, and paste uh, the the pattern from here to my uh, to to my uh, sidechain redrum or my ghost redrum, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
on this redrum, I'm using the gate out of both the first two, since those link with these first two here, uh, or they line up within the uh, within the um, uh, piano roll, uh, so that I can copy it up. It's going to trigger both of these. And then both these gate inputs are going into a CV merger splitter, specifically the merger. These are getting merged, and then this goes all the way down the tower to the gate in of the sidechain reactor, uh, RE. So what happens here, every single kick and snare hit is going to trigger um, this uh, volume envelope, essentially. Um, and that is completely separate from uh, uh, from anything else going on in that. So this so so this so this hi hat lane is fully clear. Uh, it's it's not going to trigger it or or anything like that. It's strictly based off of the gate inputs. Um, then with this, you know, you can like shape it however you want. You can do something like super weird. Uh, I would never do that personally uh, unless I had some really uh, creative reason for it. Um, but yeah, that's my side training, which is for me is a huge step within the, uh, template process. So last but not least would be the mastering section. Uh, this mastering section, um, I utilize this, the Synapse GQ7 a lot. I, I, I love this EQ. Uh, it's a little CPU heavy, but, uh, it's super awesome. Uh, an ozone, Another one of those and a maximizer. So what I'm doing here is the first thing I'm splitting uh, the signal into into two EQs, uh, a mid EQ and a side EQ, and so I can process those separately. I'm high passing the sides at 100 hertz. Um, I'm typically not going to put anything in the sides below that, um, and then I can change stuff as uh, need be. As a note, I do not have the spectrum on 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 uh, either of these. Um, just because I'll, I'll have it on my last one. Uh, anyways, uh, those two get merged back together in the mixer. And then they hit in a uh, ozone maximizer uh, to pump up some more volume. Uh, the final EQ, if I want to do any last like sh like shaping or or like anything like that, and then the stock maximizer with soft clipping on, so I can pump out a bit more volume. Um, but yeah, the only weird part about this, I think, is just this this uh, mid side thing. Um, as you can see, I just split them out and merge them back together. Uh, you can change it right here if you didn't know. Um, it's great. I love it. Um, having the two separate EQs rather than trying to do them both within one, um, and it, and it's nice that it's a, that it's an RE. That way, you're not jumping out to a VST screen as well. Um, so yeah, this is my template overall. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of maintenance on it because like I said, um, I totally didn't mean to have these in here. And it's also defaulting to 150, which I could take that or leave it. And I'm going to keep these extra note lanes here. Uh, actually, I'm going to add one more. Uh, if you if you press uh, the comma button, it'll add an extra note lane for you. And that works on anything, essentially. And I don't want that there either. I'm going to delete that track. So I, I don't need that. I want. I just want the combinator because I like. I, I like writing from from the combinator, and I like doing all my automation from from the combinator. Uh, that's a whole other video that I'll get into about the rant about me and combinators. But yeah, um, I hope you got something out of this. Um, whether it be some mastering tips, some uh, some side chaining chips. Like I said, if 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 you're doing EDM, go out and get this 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 RE. It's awesome. Totally kicks ass. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, want life advice, uh, you can shoot me a message or drop a comment. Otherwise, I will catch you guys next time.